Today, our 22nd lecture will be on the topic of passive filters. Before we go into the discussion of passive filters, let us just review what we had done uh, earlier. So, we had discussed about the mathematical theory of filter approximation the mathematical functions that uh, represents closely the box like approximation. So, we started off with uh, structure this blue color corresponding to 1 by 1 plus x to power 4 the maximally flat function okay, of the second order, right. it is uh, sort of uh, one of the most common maximally flat functions to be used in a variety of applications, filter is one of them. We can also design transconductors with signal level Okay, plotted this way and becoming maximally flat. Okay. So, it is an important mathematical function. Then we went over to uh, variation of that which is called inverse Debussy function where again we have no x function in the numerator only the denominator has that. 1 minus x squared plus 2 x to power 4. That means, it is an even function of x okay, still remains an even function, but here this minus x squared indicates the its influence close to x equal to 0 in enhancing the amplitude. That means, actually now you can cause it to peak within the pass band, so that it can cause a ripple in the pass band. So, the extent to which this dominates tells by what extent this has gone above. That is as you increase the coefficient of this it increases faster and faster. So, uh, the magnitude of this is controlled by the coefficient of x square okay, compared to the coefficient of x to power 4. So, uh, that is the ripple in the pass band structure. Then if you sort of increase the coefficient of x square, you can increase the ripple you can see. Now, another way of doing it is instead of increasing the coefficient here, you can have a coefficient in the numerator a polynomial having numerator function of x square which is 1 minus 0.25 x square divided by 1 minus 1.25 that means it is in a sense it is equivalent to having 1 minus x square this 0.25 gets cancelled with 0.25 when x is close to 0. Okay. So, we have in a sense this being imitated by this okay. and uh, this is going to be the uh, function which is going to have ripple in the pass band. So, then you can have this as positive and this as negative which is again going to cause increased negative function okay it is equivalent to having 1 minus um, let's say 2 x square in the denominator so this will be increasing it further okay and uh, this particular function 1 minus 0.25 instead of 1 plus x squared here okay, is going to facilitate introduction of a 0 in the stop band beyond x equal to 1. If the coefficient of this is less than 1, you can introduce a 0 outside the pass band. So, when it is positive and this is negative effectively you can cause a ripple in the uh, pass band okay. 
with no zeros coming into picture. If the denominator and numerator both have negative then you can cause a ripple in the pass band and a zero in the stop band okay that kind of thing function is called elliptic function. So, we have this as let us say elliptic that is ripple in the pass band ripple in the stop band okay. Then we have this function which is Butterworth maximally flat okay. So, it has only the coefficient highest coefficient of x squared that is x uh, 4 here the rest of the coefficients are all 0 and no numerator coefficients. This one is going to be just a ripple in the pass band okay which is called Chebyshev. Okay, this one, this one. This is similar to the Chebyshev function. Okay, this one. Okay, is called inverse Chebyshev. So the characteristic feature of inverse Chebyshev is these two coefficients are the same, so that it is maximally flat. Okay in the pass band and there is ripple in the stop band there is a 0 here. So, maximally flat in the pass band okay in the pass band and ripple in the stop band that is the characteristic feature of inverse to be seen okay. So, it is this green function okay. So, <coughs> this one is Chebyshev function okay. So, there is ripple in the pass band and uh, there is no 0 coming into picture. This is called elliptic ripple in the pass band and ripple in the stop band. Ripple both in the pass band and stop band. But about no ripple maximally flat. So, these are the uh, mathematical function is easily understood and setting the coefficient can be done experimentally I suggest that you take any um, uh, graph plotter which is freely available in the internet and try all these manipulations of the function and see these plots and understand the design of filter functions right. Now this is another uh, part of filter design that we can discuss higher order wide band filter with stagger tuned narrow band filters of lower order. How do you bring about this? Let us say we are starting with this function which is 1 by 1 plus x square that is the Butterworth function of first order that is plotted here. Around the x equal to 0 this is going to give you the characteristic this way. Now, how to get a higher order Butterworth that is the exercise that means how do I get this as 1 by 1 plus x to power 4 by using two such things right it is understood that I have to multiply this okay by another of this time. So, what is, uh, what is the way to multiply okay so that it becomes this that means all the other coefficients of uh, x squared etcetera should go to 0 after multiplying. So, what we do is mathematically you can see that this characteristic can be shifted on either side of x equal to 0 by certain amount let us say alpha. So, what happens then this shifting function will be let us say k 
divided by 1 plus let us say x minus alpha okay whole square. So, I have shifted it by alpha and this one can be multiplied by another which is k divided by let us say 1 plus x plus alpha. We know that it should be a symmetric function around the x equal to 0 in order that it remains symmetric you have to multiply one that is shifted on, okay onto this side peaking at x equal to alpha and this is peaking at x equal to minus alpha. So, you multiply this you get this as k squared divided by you can see that this is 1 plus x minus alpha whole squared x plus alpha whole squared is going to be uh, 2 x squared plus 2 alpha squared and then this into this is going to be plus x squared minus alpha squared whole squared. So, here for this function you will see that the coefficient of uh, x squared can equal to 0 when alpha is equal to 1. So, this is the choice for the alpha. So, that means actually it becomes a function which is going to be uh, 4 okay, divided by okay, uh, some actually if it is 2 divided by 1 plus 1 plus x squared okay, this will be 1 plus okay, 1 plus x squared okay, into 1 minus x squared into 1 squared minus x squared whole squared added to this. So, that is what it is right. So, and it will therefore become equal to okay uh, by properly selecting this you can now make it equal to 1 by which is this 1 by 1 plus x to power 4 okay. The, this divided by 4 ultimately. So, this is how the choice of k, k is equal to 2 for that you can show that it becomes equal to this. So, this is the mathematical procedure of making a wider band okay, structure using a narrow band okay, multiplying it twice okay this into this okay shifting it this way and shifting it that way and multiplying these two and and then making it become equal to this by making alpha equal to 1. If you increase the alpha slightly then there will be ripple in the pass band. So, the extent to which it deviates from this alpha equal to 1 gives more and more ripple in this as alpha is less than 1 it gets narrowed down okay it does not become wide band. So, these are the techniques of designing wide band filters if you have 3 of them okay it can still become wider or it will be 1 by 1 plus k x to power 6 that is what we can synthesize. So, try it out as a problem to solve you have 3 such peaks 1 okay at x equal to minus alpha another at x equal to plus alpha and the third one which is at x equal to 0 multiply these 3 and get a wider band. So, what are the passive filters? Filters that use only passive components R, L and C are the passive components that are used these are known as passive filters. Before the commercial availability of the op amps all baseband filters are mainly passive in nature. Is, uh, so, almost all telephone filters were passive filters that also in the baseband they were very bulky okay. 
However, because of uh, reliability, precision, okay, and low sensitivity to temperature variation and aging, these were preferred. Transformer was the other passive device which is used for impedance matching. So, these were passive linear network elements which were used for filter design. So, present day baseband filters no longer use uh, discrete transformers. Okay. The baseband filters presently are mainly uh, using discrete components are never used because it is mostly done by digital filtering. Or active filters. I have replaced all these passive filters. Passive filters are still used in microwave and RF region. RF and even AF. Interconnect, I mean, as bandpass filters, these are the most preferred ones. Okay, are selective. Even for rejecting and selecting, okay, these uh, still form a uh, very small size, may be compatible with present day electronics, and therefore, these are still in use. Interconnect models now, interconnect is an important thing now. Okay, in most of the layout, we have uh, connections from one set of group of active devices to another group of active devices, whether they are analog signal processing ICs or okay, uh, digital signal processing ICs. Interconnect is a common thing. So, the interconnect from one node to the other can be modeled crudely as uh, resistance causing some dissipation and capacitance parasitic. So, it is essentially acting like a low pass filter. So, since interconnect become very important okay, at very high frequencies their effect on both digital signal processors and analog signal processors become very important to understand. And therefore, this is now uh, something that one has to understand in order to understand signal processing, the effect of parasitics. On the other hand, if at very high frequencies the inductive okay, parasitic also comes into picture apart from the resistance, then it becomes a low pass filter of second order that is the uh, approximation that you can so, do for the interconnect okay, between one and one node and another node, okay, the transmission line. So, that becomes R, L and C. So, if you have actually large number of nodes, then from here you will have again the same model with different value of R depending upon the length and the capacitance, okay, these will be different. Again, this will be modeled as another set of value of. So, all these are interconnect passive okay, filter like approximation. So, filters are also components which can be simulating any higher order linear system okay, for understanding even mechanical and aeronautic systems we can use the model uh, uh, electrical model for this. So, most of the filter topics are discussed in a course on networks. Again 
the systems analog systems with feedback we have discussed the effect of the same transfer function on uh, the performance of the uh, system. So, all these things can be modeled in terms of passive filters. Let us see how it can be done. First order RC network we have al already discussed all these transfer functions when we discussed the uh, two port uh, passive networks earlier. Let us revisit that V naught by V i is equal to 1 by 1 plus SCR that is a low pass transfer function for sinusoidal excitation S is replaced by J omega. So, V naught by V i is 1 by 1 plus J omega C r V naught by V i magnitude squared is nothing but this H of J omega H star of J omega ok uh, T of J omega and T star of J omega ok. So, that is nothing but the magnitude square ok which is equal to 1 by 1 plus omega C r square 1 by 1 plus capital omega square where capital omega is called the normalized frequency. So, let us understand these terminologies which are often used in filters normalized frequency. So, this is the way all standard filters are built in terms of normalized frequency 1 by 1 plus capital omega square similar to what we wrote earlier in terms of x 1 by 1 plus x square which is a butterworth function ok as far as the magnitude uh, power magnitude is concerned. So, it is equivalent to power magnitude V naught over V i squared will be 1 by 1 plus omega squared V naught over V i therefore, magnitude is square root of this. It is similar to maximally flat magnitude Butterworth function of first order. So, this is maximally flat magnitude function of the first order. So, that is why it is 1 by 1 plus omega square. So, it is a natural Butterworth filter first order is always a natural Butterworth filter function. <coughs> response is similar to that of low pass filter as far as the phase response is concerned ok. Phi is equal to angle of V naught over V i tan inverse omega C r minus tan inverse omega C r that is a phase lag ok. So, minus d phi by d omega change of phase with frequency is called delay function. This delay we have already discussed in uh, signal ok processing I have already indicated if this is the signal and it is going through some system which is not affecting the magnitude ok, but only causing ok delay then the signal will be shifted in time by this delay function. So, that delay is defined as change of phase with respect to frequency ok delta phi by minus delta phi by delta omega is called tau the delay. So, if we uh, have the phase function here 1 over 1 plus j omega c r is the transfer function. So, the phase is really equal to ok tan inverse omega c r ok minus. So, this is the phase phi of this low pass ok. So, if you now take delta phi by delta omega of this minus of that that becomes again nothing but C r divided by 1 plus omega C r square ok or it is normalized ok where uh, the 
omega C r is capital omega square. So, it is actually equal to omega naught into tau ok that is the delay function ok tau is the delay function. So, this square magnitude and the delay are frequency dependent in the pass band. So, this also is similar to what we saw other earlier that is both magnitude function squared and delay function are of the same nature 1 by 1 plus omega square ok. So, <coughs> ok. These are plotted here V naught over V i magnitude 1 by 1 plus square root of 1 plus omega square and delay tau by tau naught equal to T. These are plotted here and they are maximally flat. So, this corresponds to magnitude function which is 1 by square root of 1 plus omega square this corresponds to delay function. So, let us this is 1 by 1 plus omega squared square root ok whereas, this is 1 by 1 plus omega square. ok as far as the bandwidth is concerned omega equal ok in the power uh, half power point ok it becomes half and the square root if you take it is 1 by root 2 ok or 3 dB point it is called. So, filters with maximally flat magnitude functions are called Butterworth filters. Filters with maximally flat delay characteristics are called Bessels ok and Thomson filters ok. Rate of attenuation at the edge of the path band ok omega equal to 1 is minus 0.5. First order low pass filter RL filter. So, we have the RC filter you just put L in series and R in shunt. In the RC filter it was R in series and C in shunt at the output. So, it just is changed over and then it becomes ok uh, low pass R L filter. Here earlier 1 over R C is the cutoff frequency omega naught ok or uh, the what is that this is the uh, normalizing frequency and here it is R by L ok that is the normalizing frequency this mean that means this is also written as 1 by 1 plus s by omega naught. So, omega naught is equal to r by l this is equal to 1 by 1 plus capital S right. So, now consider the second order but our passive low pass filter. So, we have now a combination of L and C we had the low pass filter with R and C and the low pass filter with L and R. Now, we have R and L coming in series with C in shunt forming what is called second order low pass filter. So, output is equal to input for DC. So, 1 by 1 plus SCR ok <coughs> plus s squared l c I mean how this is to be written is very simply this is the methodology which we have been adopting 1 by 1 plus ok the uh, admittance in shunt that is s c and impedance in series which is r plus s l. So, we get this. So, this is therefore written as 1 by 1 plus 
S by omega naught q plus S squared by omega naught squared. So, that is the normalizing frequency omega naught equal to 1 by root L c. So, this is the series resonance circuit coming into picture. So, we have omega naught equal to 1 by root L c that is the resonant frequency and that that is the normalizing frequency then S by omega naught q. So, q is something that we are going to identify as root L by C divided by R okay, by comparison of coefficients. Okay. This is S by omega naught Q. So, omega naught Q is equal to uh, S by omega naught okay, and omega naught CR is 1 by Q. So, from that you get this substituting this. So, that is what omega naught is equal to 1 by root L c okay, which is the normalizing frequency of S square and at S equal to j omega we can now introduce this as 1 by 1 plus j omega c r minus omega squared L c okay, this becomes that. So, again replacing it with normalizing frequency and putting omega by omega naught as capital omega. Right. You get this equation as the magnitude function as 1 by 1 minus omega squared whole square that is the real part plus omega squared by q square which can be written as 1 by 1 plus 1 by q squared minus 2 omega squared plus omega to the power 4. So, this is the square of the magnitude function. So, these are the definitions q is equal to root L c by r this is known as a quality factor and if q is made equal to that is the choice. Okay. 1 over q squared is made equal to 2 or q is equal to 1 over root 2 will make this go to 0 and then it becomes but about 1 by 1 plus omega to the power 4. It becomes second order butter what filter. So, a choice of omega naught and q decide the function of the filter uniquely and q equal to 1 over root 2 its frequency response is maximally flat flatter than corresponding to the first order. So, as you keep on increasing the order okay, you can make it flatter and flatter over a wider range of passband frequencies and attenuation will be more rapid in the stop band. It is going to a closely approximate the box like characteristic that we want. So, now consider the phase these are the two factors that are very important. So, the same transfer function the this is the real part and this is the imaginary part. So, phase of V naught over V i phi is equal to minus tan inverse the imaginary part omega by q divided by the real part 1 minus omega square. So, t is defined as delay is defined as minus t phi by d omega. So, if you actually differentiate this okay, then t becomes equal to 1 over q in the numerator it is 1 plus omega square divided by the same denominator that we had earlier obtained 1 plus minus 2 plus 1 over q square omega square plus omega to the power 4 this is the same as the uh, denominator of the magnitude function. So, however, this has a numerator polynomial. So, if you actually differentiate this and maximize this you can show that the maximum occurs at omega equal to 1 okay, or at the resonant frequency T max is equal to 2 q value of this at omega equal to 1 is 2 q. 
working. So, this is very important it is directly proportional this slope is directly proportional to Q. That means the entire change of phase from 0 to 180 degree because change of phase occurs from 0 to 180 degree okay as omega keeps uh, shifting right towards uh, infinity from 0 the phase changes from 0 to 180 degrees and that rapidity of phase change occurs okay or uh, keeps on increasing okay as q increases that we will plot and see for actual uh, low pass filters built by us. So, we have here for different q values okay this is for a q of 10 okay and this is uh, no this is for a q of 10 and uh, this is going to be uh, okay at a higher q than this right. So, if this is uh, for a q of 10 this will be uh, 2.5 higher than that because r comes in the denominator. So, you can see this is for the lower q and this is for the higher q the plot of magnitude it peaks okay. This we had noted in the system design also higher the q more is the peak around the resonance. Now, what happens to the phase characteristic this also we had noted okay higher q okay the phase changes more rapidly okay and still higher if you consider okay the perhaps the q is going to make it change very rapidly okay. So, this is going to be the fact that the q change that is for higher the q's the phase change is going to be concentrated all around the resonant frequency which is about uh, 16 kilohertz for this that we have chosen okay. So, now let us consider that this circuit is going to be having a characteristic as we saw the magnitude characteristic this is a second order filter the magnitude characteristic can peak around resonance and come down like this. So, if you really find out the peak that depends upon q okay that is the ripple that you can find. So, it is equivalent to a Chebyshev filter okay peaking in the pass band with ripple. If you make q equal to 1 over root 2 that it becomes butterworth. So, it just becomes a butterworth filter right okay. So, by changing the q you can go over from Butterworth to Chebyshev right as far as this topology is concerned. These are the ones which are which are plotted here this is close to Butterworth and this is the Chebyshev as both of them are somewhat Chebyshev because Q is much greater than 1 over root 2. So, if you want to make the it truly Butterworth maximally flat you can do it by making the Q go to 1 over root 2 that means selecting the resistance value appropriately. Now, if you chain this we had earlier this network let us say 80 whatever resistance it was 40 you sort of 
increase the uh, I mean decrease the Q, increase the resistance, decrease the Q to half its value and you replace this using the same inductor but a capacitor to resonate at a certain frequency okay and this was the earlier capacitor you use an appropriate inductor to resonate at the same frequency right omega naught let us say. Then you can shift the entire characteristic from 0 to any value you want omega naught. So, the same characteristic which was earlier coming as this got shifted to from 0 let us say it got if this is 0 from 0 it got shifted to okay any center frequency you want. That means by putting appropriate resonant circuits which resonate at the same value this is series resonant and this is parallel resonance. So, this effect of band pass can be shifted to okay occurring around 0 frequency can be shifted to any frequency omega naught. This we will later on discuss as frequency transformation. That means most of the filters are designed for low pass prototype and appropriate shifting of this occurs to any other frequency by replacing the in capacitor by SC by SC plus 1 over SL where omega naught is 1 over root LC that is the resonant circuit okay and as far as the inductor in series is concerned it is replaced by SL is replaced by an impedance SL plus 1 over SC again resonating at omega naught equal to 1 over root LC. This mathematically we will explain as shift from 0 to omega naught. Please remember this the filter now which was originally a second order filter now becomes a fourth order filter function. It has the same magnitude function centered around omega naught now. This is the simplicity of design. In case you want a band stop of this type okay which permits all the signals and stops signals here and again permits all signal beyond this then it is necessary to replace this inductor by a parallel resonance with this L coming here and C coming in shunt that means the circuit will be this L 1 M and 0 0.04 micro farads and this will be a okay, same capacitor 0 0.1 micro with 0 0.4 milli coming in series. So, this is the network for band stop function okay. something goes like that. So, you can see that it is pretty simple as far as uh, designing filter is concerned and for delay equalization you can see that it is only necessary to make here this maximally flat. How do you make this maximally flat? You can see that this coefficient is 1 omega square. So, 1 is equal to coefficient here minus 2 plus 1 over q square. So, this becomes q square is equal to 1 by 3 or q is equal to 1 by root 3 that is called a Thomson filter of the second order or Bessel's filter. So, this is what has been designed you can see that it is going to be uh, for the further it is compared as 1 by 1 plus 0.5 x square okay and the other one is 1 plus x square by 1 plus x square plus x to the power 4. So, you are making this q equal to 1 over root 3 then 
this is the maximally flat delay characteristic or Thomson or Bessel filter. So, we had now seen q equal to 1 over root 3 for the second order makes it a Bessel's filter maximally flat delay characteristic. So, a variety of such filters can be designed Chebyshev filter or equiripple filter can be designed now q has to be greater than 1 over root 2. So, it is of this type as far as magnitude is concerned now k 1 being controlled by the factor 2 minus 1 over q squared for this network. So, if k 1 is 0 it is butterworth that is for q equal to 1 over root 2. So, this is the thing k 1 is 0 for butterworth q has to be 1 over root 2. So, k 1 has to be positive okay, for Chebyshev and it is k 1 that determines the extent to which ripple exists in the pass band. And for that you can actually maximize this function okay, and find out the frequency at which the maximum occurs. So, this peak is okay, root of k 1 by 2 okay, after differentiating and, and this point k 1 okay, corresponds to okay, 2 minus 1 by q square. Okay. The extent uh, uh, sorry the peak at which omega uh, I mean peak at which this occurs correspond to root k 1 by 2 and uh, k 1 is equal to 2 minus 1 over q square and then this peak value okay, which is if this is 1 this is epsilon 1 1 plus epsilon 1 corresponds to 1 by 1 minus k 1 squared by 4. So, you can fix the uh, epsilon 1 and determine the value of k 1 that is necessary for getting this kind of peak. So, we have designed it for uh, epsilon 1 equal to 0 0.1 and k 1 comes out as 0 0.83 and that is what is plotted here. Okay. So, 1 by square root of 1 minus 0 0.83 omega square plus omega to the power 4 okay, which is the designed thing for a ripple of 0 0.1 in the pass band. That means, this goes from 1 to 1.1 okay, if we select the k 1 as 0 0.83 and corresponding Butterworth function which deviates by 0 0.1 is plotted here at x equal to 1. So, you can compare the Butterworth with the Chebyshev. So, this design has been complete here by suitably selecting the q. So, k 1 equal to 0 0.83 you can find out the value of q needed. So, if this is Point eight three two minus 1 by q squared you can find out the value of q from this. Okay. Now, if you select the same RLC network with same value of r and L and C okay, as far as the denominator is concerned it is reproduced exactly. Now, that L I am going to split it as L 1 plus L 2 that means, I make this L equal to L 1 plus L 2. I can split L 1 so that the uh, this acts as a shot at very high frequencies. Okay. This ultimately the at high frequencies these two impedances dominate. So, the attenuation at very high frequencies will be L 1 by L 1 plus L 2 that can be fixed at any value you want. Okay. Then actually 
this introduces a 0 at 1 over 2 pi root L 1 into C. Okay. So, that it will therefore, be a function which can actually peak just as we had designed it for a high peak okay, because the denominator still remains 1 minus maybe 0.83 okay, x square plus x to the power 4. Okay, so, it peaks at the same point, but there has been a 0 that has been introduced outside the band okay, and that 0 corresponds to a frequency of 1 over 2 pi root L 1 into C that can be conveniently located at any point we want. Right? So, that is nothing but an elliptic filter okay. uh, if the, it is peaking and there is a 0 then it is called an elliptic filter if it is maximally flat okay, by suitably selecting the value of Q you can make it maximally flat and that there is a 0 at this point then it is called inverse Chebyshev filter. So, this is the elliptic filter that has been designed. If this Q is chosen such that it is maximally flat then it becomes inverse Chebyshev filter. So, these are the values of components that are used okay, for the same network. Okay, L2 plus L1 is the same value 1 milli Henry's. C is the same value 0 0.1 microfarad. So, everything else remains the same but there is a 0 that is introduced outside the pass by. So, <coughs> this is the way we have this resonant at omega equal to 1 over root L 1 C okay, and the denominator remains the same as before okay, and Q is the same as before okay, and uh, only the 0 frequency is now having introduce the 0 appropriately. Okay. In the numerator we have 1 minus n 1 omega square okay. and the n 1 is decided by the ratio of omega naught by omega z okay, whole square. So, that can be fixed appropriately by knowing where exactly we want the 0 to be introduced. So, this is the point at which 0 is introduced. So, inverse Chebyshev filter okay, we can fix all these things appropriately. Okay. So, we have actually uh, introduced a condition where it is maximally flat. So, 2 n 1 is same as k 1 that is for the inverse Chebyshev. In the case of uh, elliptic, okay, we have to make k 1 greater than 2 n 1, so that there is a peak. k 1 is made greater than 2 n 1 for elliptic. And these are the uh, functions elliptic low pass filter, okay, ripple in the pass band and ripple in the stop band and we have uh, the Butterworth filter second order okay. and then inverse Chebyshev filter right. Inverse Chebyshev filter is not that okay. So, we have only the uh, elliptic filter with different peaks okay. and then uh, the Butterworth filter for comparison. So, n 1 is equal to 0.25 k 1 is equal to 0.7. So, that is one elliptic filter that we have chosen. So, in conclusion we have seen how to design the basic filters in first order and second order. If you know how to design basic filters in first order and second order, you can just cascade these filters okay, and get any higher order filter. Okay. That also has been demonstrated mathematically at least. 
So, uh, important thing is we have maximally flat magnitude filter or Butterworth filter that has been designed first order and second order and then Chebyshev filter with ripple in the pass band peaking in the pass band and the extent of ripple can be decided by appropriately selecting the Q. Okay. Butterworth also Q selection is the crux of the design and then inverse Chebyshev where it is maximally flat in the pass band and ripple in the stop band. 0 is introduced in the stop band. Peaking in the pass band as well as uh, ripple in the stop band is called elliptic. Okay. And this is the one that has the highest rate of attenuation in the stop bandage for the same order. We had also discussed the maximally flat delay characteristic or Thomson filters and Bessel's filter. In the next class, we will be discussing further about the frequency transformation starting from the low pass prototype, how to go over to uh, band pass, band stop, high pass, etcetera.